The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, country singer Randy Travis and his wife return to the Grand Old Opry. What's it like coming back each time? Home. Yeah. It's like coming home. And open up about the stroke that nearly claimed his life. I said, baby, you got to let me know if you want to keep fighting. Then, a heart attack. I saw two ambulances and a police car. And there was my husband. Known as the Widowmaker. This can't be happening. Watch as a husband is brought back from the brink. He will live and not die. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club. Let's go over to the CBN Newsroom for today's top stories. Gordon, a major victory for school choice at the U.S. Supreme Court as it ruled five to four. Montana and by extension, other states cannot ban government funding for religious institutions like schools. As Paul Strand reports, the justice has told states if they're going to be offering something to private secular schools, they have to do it for religious ones as well. The Espinoza case involved moms like Kendra Espinoza suing Montana, claiming the state was discriminating against their children's religious schools. In the end, that's how the court's conservative majority saw it, too. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote, a state need not subsidize private education, but once the state decides to do so, it cannot disqualify some private schools solely because they are religious. The court's ruling defangs statewide provisions known as Blaine Amendments, enacted into dozens of state constitutions that discriminate against Catholics. Blaine Amendments were written during a wave of anti-Catholic bigotry in the 1800s to stop Catholic schools from receiving aid. And today, they're used to discriminate against people of many faiths. The court recognizes that Blaine Amendments have a bigoted history, and that history makes them unconstitutional. Today, they've been used to exclude any religious groups from government programs, and I'm happy to say that that discrimination should now be over. This is a fabulous decision for families, for educational freedom. What this does is it allows families in dozens of states now to engage in a real conversation about having school choice programs. The four more liberal justices all voted against Espinoza, with Justice Stephen Breyer writing, if for 250 years we have drawn a line at forcing taxpayers to pay the salaries of those who teach their faith from the pulpit, I do not see how we can today require Montana to adopt a different view respecting those who teach in the classroom. We don't believe that uh, you as a taxpayer should be compelled to fund anybody else's religious practices. We are for school options. We do not believe in supporting religious institutions with taxpayer dollars. But Kendra Espinoza points out religious schools often do a better job than the public schools, making them worthy of support. I don't feel that there's enough um, teaching at the public school to teach my children how to develop character, and I wanted more for my children. I wanted them to be challenged more academically rather than just coast through and graduate. The White House weighed in saying, we celebrate today's Supreme Court decision on religious schools, which removes one of the biggest obstacles to better educational opportunities for all children. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. And on our Faith Nation program on the CBN News Channel, Lindsey Burke, the director of the Center for Education Policy at the Heritage Foundation, explained why this ruling is so important for families who want to send their children to religious schools. Today was just a huge win for both families and the Constitution. The court held that excluding religious schools from Montana's school choice program was simply unconstitutional and that free exercise means that you cannot discriminate against people just because they are religious. So this was really just a huge win for families, a huge win for school choice, and a huge win for the Constitution overall. This really means at the end of the day, families participating in private school choice programs have the entire range of private schooling options available to them. And this is really critical because we know that families often choose schools based on whether or not those schools align with their values. And as Paul Strand mentioned, President Trump's re-election campaign also weighed in, calling the decision a victory for educational freedom. Turning now to Israel, no vote today on the plan to annex biblical lands in the West Bank as had been planned. That comes after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman and White House Envoy Avi Berkowitz. Netanyahu had set today as the first date to vote on extending Israeli sovereignty over parts of biblical Judea and Samaria, as first laid out in President Trump's Middle East peace plan.
With Avi Berkowitz and Ambassador Friedman and members of their delegation, I spoke about the question of sovereignty, which we're working on these days and will continue to work on in the coming days. The peace plan was to allow Israel to extend sovereignty over 30 percent of the West Bank and leave 70 percent for a future Palestinian state. Israeli state-owned broadcaster Khan released a new map showing areas to come under Israeli civil law. Although Netanyahu said the government would work on the annexation in the days ahead, it is hard to say how long it will be until Israel actually moves ahead. Back here at home, the coronavirus continues to sweep across the country, spiking in more than 30 states. As Dr. Anthony Fauci is warning, the numbers could shoot up much higher as the U.S. could be on track to see 100,000 cases a day. Charlene Aaron is more in this story. The U.S. is headed in the wrong direction on COVID-19. That's the warning from Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert. Fauci's warning comes as the nation sees some 40,000 new cases a day, numbers he told senators could more than double. I would not be surprised if we go up to 100,000 a day if this does not turn around, and so I am very concerned. I think it's important to tell you and the American public that I'm very concerned because it could get very bad. In California, the virus surging out of control with nearly a quarter million cases and over 100,000 cases in Los Angeles County alone. More than 6,000 have died in the state. 51-year-old Tommy Maceus, a diabetic who wore a mask and practiced social distancing for months, died from the virus after attending a family barbecue. In Riverside County, ICUs filled to capacity. We're seeing a large number of cases coming in where multiple family members are infected. California Governor Gavin Newsom with this stern warning. If you're not going to stay home and you're not going to wear masks in public, we have to enforce and we will. Bars and beaches once again closed. In Imperial County, this tent set up outside of a hospital to handle the overflow of patients. In Florida, more than 150,000 cases reported, with most in Miami-Dade County. Several cities now requiring residents to wear masks. Just wear the darn mask. Studies show that talking helps the virus to spread, and wearing a mask can reduce it by some estimates up to 50 percent. Stay healthy. This man lost his father to COVID-19 and says masks could have made a difference. If the people that, you know, he saw were wearing masks, he'd probably still be alive. Meanwhile, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, where thousands have died from the virus, have issued a 14-day quarantine on people traveling from California and 15 other states where the virus is surging. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. The coronavirus outbreak has not kept the Army's old guard from carrying out its duty. CBN's Gabe LaMonica brings us the story of the soldiers tasked with guarding and burying our nation's heroes. For now, Arlington National Cemetery is closed to the public with funerals closed to the media. Still, the mission of the old guard here continues. The final call plays on. Those 24 notes known as taps, marking the end of a day on base. And a national song of tribute to fallen heroes. Even in the midst of a pandemic, this remains a place immune to change. From the eternal flame marking the grave of President John F. Kennedy to the tomb of the unknown where the old guard stands watch over the resting place of unnamed soldiers. In keeping with the dignity of the ceremony, it is request that we remain silent and standing. The usual crowds who silently watch this ceremonial changing of the guard are absent now. But the American soldier known but to God remains under constant and meticulous watch. For us, it doesn't matter if it's a hurricane or in this case, if it's a pandemic. We are always here. We are always guarding. 
through a hurricane and even during the 9-11 terror attacks. In rain, snow, sleet, and gloom of night, these watchmen have kept a 24-hour-a-day vigil for more than 80 years. And the coronavirus isn't about to scratch that record. A crazy look. But this is the first time they've worn masks in close quarters. There's hope. And masks are now worn during funeral services and burials. Please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved ones' honorable and faithful service. Even as the nation's veterans and their families continue to receive full military honors. The unknowns deserve that. Our country deserves that. This, this place represents the very best of this country. Quite frankly, at a time in which we need reminding of what our very best looks like. That very best represented by an elite group of soldiers, sometimes standing still as statues. This is the oldest active duty regiment in the U.S. Army. But beyond the pomp and circumstance, the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment is a fully trained and certified Army combat unit. To serve as a sentinel in what is known as the official escort to the President is considered one of the Army's highest honors. For them, the honor is in the mission. The guards don't wear masks while keeping watch, but they do keep their social distance during the changing of the guard and the all-important uniform inspection. The motto of the old guard? Touch me not. Gabe LaMonica, CBN News, Arlington National Cemetery. Those are today's top stories from CBN News. Gordon and Cheryl will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. The name Randy Travis is synonymous with country music, and his real-life story could be a country song. In childhood, he suffered trauma, and then he suffered addiction as an adult. In 2013, his heart stopped beating. He shares the intimate details in his memoir, Forever and Ever, Amen. Recently, Ephraim Graham sat down with Randy and his wife, Mary, at the Grand Ole Opry. There are on the right side of the highway. Here at Nashville's Grand Old Opry, you might say Randy Travis's voice still lingers on stage. And in the walls backstage, where we find Randy and his wife Mary admiring his many photographs with country music friends. That preacher whispered, can't you see the promised land? A lot begins here at the Grand Ole Opry. So what's it like coming back each time? Good. <laughs> yeah. Home. Yeah. It's like coming home. Randy's at his music home celebrating his 60th birthday, roughly six years after being in a coma and suffering a stroke that nearly killed him. It was Randy's decision to not pull the plug and to continue and you share that in the story so he can't tell you I want to live. But what happens that gives you the sign that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to fight? Yeah, well, I was going to fight because he was going to fight. Mm. And we were both going to fight because God was still fighting for mm. us. And he's the final say. Randy, I went to his bedside and I knew what the doctors had told me and that was that we can't save him, we can't do anything else. You just need to pull the plug. That was what the typical medical journal would tell you. Uh, what I tell the world is God doesn't read uh, medical files. <laughs> He's not interested. So I went to his bedside and I said, honey, I said, baby, you got to let me know if you want to keep fighting. And he gave me the answer I needed. He squeezed my hand and we hadn't gotten um, we hadn't gotten anything out of him as far as movement or responses for days. So that was huge. It was a turning point. So he squeezed my hand and I saw a little tear form and fell down the side of his, his cheek. And so, you know, that was, it was full steam ahead. Randy is still on a long road to recovery and has difficulty speaking, but his life is an incredible journey. He's sharing in his book, Forever and Ever Amen, a memoir of music, faith, and braving the storms of life. A familiar title. I'm gonna love you forever. Forever and ever, amen. And 
Travis's third number one single. I hear that you still sing. Yeah. Do you have a favorite song now? I know. <laughs> Randy surprised fans singing one of his favorite songs at his induction into the Country Music Hall of Fame three years after his stroke. He got up there and he took that microphone and it was like he had never skipped a beat. He sang all four verses and everybody in the place, there was not a dry eye at mm -hmm. all. Everybody in there. And Garth Brooks was supposed to help, but he was having Garth a hard time holding it together there. himself. Garth <laughs> said, it just tore me up. I'm supposed to be there helping. <laughs> Amazing Grace is one of Randy's favorite songs because it's a grace he's received in his toughest times, including that infamous arrest in 2012 and a bitter divorce battle. You share some difficult stories um, in the book as well, um, from arrest to the things that people often talk about, uh, even in the way that you two found each other. I mean, both of you were, were hurting mm -hmm. and looking back on it, you, you could wish Mm -hmm. things were different. Um, Why did you choose to, to open up and share those things? To let people know we're human too. I mean, Randy's fame and fortune, and, and but he wants people to know, as I do, we're still real people and we still have hurts and pains and disappointments and uh, we still have the challenges that everybody else has. With challenges, smiles still come easy for Randy Travis especially as we travel down memory lane from the pages of his memoir. So your brother grows marijuana and the horse eats it? Yep. <laughs> yep. And he's like, out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> out. <laughs> and then another one you share, you get into an argument with your dad and you actually run and hide in the woods for like two days. Yep. Yep. <laughs> How do you survive? <laughs> you drop out of school in eighth grade. My favorite story is this, though. You break into a church and have a beer party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> okay. I guess you were thinking God will take us any way yeah. we he can get us, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> you catch him and I'll skin him. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. From the Grand Old Opry, Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Nashville, Tennessee. It's a good line. God will take us anyway. Uh, amazing grace. Randy Travis's book is called Forever and Ever, Amen, and you can find it wherever books are sold. Terry? Well, coming up, when her husband didn't return home from a walk, his wife found him at the end of their driveway. He was all purple, and his eyes were fixed like glass. They were red and yellow, and it was like, my husband, this can't be happening. Find out what exactly did happen to this man when we come back. When Pam Dumont reached the end of her driveway, she saw two ambulances and a police car. She also saw her husband, Jim, lying on the ground and no one knew what had happened to him. It was a dread. It was a huge rising up of anxiety inside of my heart. I knew something was wrong. Pastor Jim Dumont and his wife Pam were visiting Jim's parents in Maine. One evening while Jim was out for a walk, Pam had a sudden surge of fear and went to look for him. I got to the end of the driveway and down the hill at the boat launch, I saw two ambulances and a police car, and there was my husband. No one knew what had happened to Jim. EMTs performed CPR and struggled to get a pulse. He was all purple, and his eyes were fixed like glass. They were red and yellow, and it was like, my husband, this can't be happening. Fearing the worst, Pam frantically called Paul, an elder in their church. 
She said, Paul, you gotta help me, I'm in trouble. Jim is laying on the road. We don't know if a car hit him, but he has no pulse. And I need you to pray, and I, the spirit rose up inside of me. And I said, Pam, he will live and not die. And that's according to Psalms 118, 17, he will live and not die. And he will declare the goodness of God. Meanwhile, EMTs were able to get a pulse and Jim was transported to Central Maine Medical Center. The most we knew at that point was that his heart had stopped for 12 to 15 minutes it was the reported downtime. Uh, and that becomes important because for every minute that your heart is stopped uh, beyond a critical limit, you have decreased blood flow to all your organs, particularly your brain. And we always worry about in that setting, could there be a potential brain injury? News about Jim quickly spread. And in less than an hour, over 100 church members gathered to worship and pray. For three hours, we just praised God that no weapon formed against him would prosper. And every time throughout the day I thought about him, I, did, I quoted that verse, no weapon formed against him shall prosper, he shall live and not die. Jim was placed in a drug-induced coma while receiving hypothermic therapy to prevent brain damage. Doctors were hoping he would wake up in 36 hours, but for days he remained unresponsive to stimulation. Our son is a physical medicine rehab doctor, and he just shouted at his father, slapped his hands, slapped his feet, moved him. I mean, he worked so hard to get his dad to come up out of the coma. The event happened on a Monday, and it was a Friday, and he really wasn't making any sort of neurological recovery. Um, and it was pretty concerning. Each day that passes that someone doesn't wake up, we get more and more concerned. I know that their sense of fear was there. Mine was too. The church continued to believe in God's faithfulness, despite the negative reports. No matter what we heard, the condition and that he wasn't responding, and we didn't let that bother any of us because we walk by faith. Pastor Jim has taught us that, that we walk by faith and not by what's going on. Churches galore started praying for him. A Christian radio station just let it be known that Pastor Dumont needed our prayers. Jim remained in a coma. With an uncertain future, Justin's wife and children prepared to say goodbye to their grandfather. The sixth morning at 7.30, I've been told he's got brain damage. And we said, well, you know, we should give the kids a chance to you know, possibly say goodbye to, to, to their grandfather, knowing that, you know, it may be kind of the last time they would see him. While Jim's grandkids prayed and sang to him, suddenly he opened his eyes. My son came running into the waiting room. He said, Mom, you have got to go in there. And he's coming alive, Mom. And it just was joy, unspeakable. It was a miracle before the eyes, the nurses and the technicians, they came in, tears in their eyes. We've never seen anything like it. Jim recovered quickly with no brain damage. He is grateful for the faithful prayers of his congregation and community and the goodness of God. As I look back and I see how so many people rallied and I, I, I'm humbled and I'm most thankful for, obviously, for our faithful Lord and Savior, Jesus, and, you know, because he's faithful. You don't realize how much you love somebody until you see them gone. Now, every day since, it's like a gift. Doctors determined that an artery behind Jim's heart, dubbed the Widowmaker, had collapsed and miraculously reopened. Stints were put in to prevent any further failures. Jim's speedy recovery astonished not only his family, but the medical community as well. It's really exciting to see how he's been able to return, um, you know, to his level of independence. You know, he's able to do things that, you know, we were, we're just astonished that people in most of the time in those situations, we don't see that. You know, we know what we know about the, the medical part of things, but what we don't know is the, the factors outside of our control. And the power of people's faith is, is real. Don't ever underestimate the power of our resurrected Savior. The Bible says He's able to do it above and beyond what we can hope or imagine. So don't limit God. You know, I'm so grateful to how our church responded and I, I just commended them and they said, well, you know, Pastor, we just did what, what we were taught, you know. 
So I would say to any pastor, teach your people well. <laughs> Obviously, Jim did. What an amazing story. God hears our prayers. Prayers matter. They rise up before him. In this instance, his family and friends prayed the promises of God out loud and back to God over their loved one. And today we want to pray for you. We know that there are many of you that are struggling with your own issues, your own needs. And so we want to take some time to really build your faith and then to join with you as God listens to all of us pray for your needs. Uh, we have some prayer reports here, answers to prayer to sort of bolster your faith even more. After suffering from horrible symptoms, Diane, who lives in Bristol, Virginia, was diagnosed with gallstones. One day, Gordon, she heard you pray a word of knowledge and you said, someone else with deep pain in your abdomen from gallstones, a gallbladder condition. God has just healed that. He's taken away all the pain, all the infection, all the stones, be gone, be made whole. Diana said she knew it was for her and she started praising the Lord. When she returned to her doctor, he did an upper GI procedure and announced that she was was free of gallstones. Hallelujah. Wow. And doctors will tell you that doesn't, doesn't, just doesn't happen. Well, here's Bill from Mayfield, Kentucky. He had something that obstructed his hearing. And then Terry prayed, that ear infection that has not responded to medication. Today is your day. Just touch your ear right now and lift your hands up and thank the Lord. He is healing you. Well, as Terry was praying, Bill heard a click in his head and his hearing opened. He can now hear in both ears very clearly and gives God all the glory. What a wonderful testimony. Let you have a wonderful testimony today. From that story, here are a couple of anchors. One from Psalm 118, I will not die, but live and declare the glory of the Lord and realize that your healing is for God's glory. Uh, what a wonderful reason. <laughs> it's for God's glory. You don't have to bargain with him. You don't have to plead with him. You just have to glorify him. And then the second, and this is another verse from that same Psalm, Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, what was that church doing? They decided for three hours, what they were going to do was praise God. And every time they thought of, of the need, what they did is they praised God, and then they started saying, I, uh, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will not die, but live and declare the glory of the Lord. And then here's something the grandchildren gathered around the bed. What were they doing? Well, they were singing. They were praising God. They were asking for relief. What wonderful way to, to, to ask. What a wonderful way to receive because you're expecting a miracle for the glory of God. Now, we can do that right now. We can expect a miracle for the glory of God, and we can expect it for you. So Terry and I are going to pray for you right now. In an act of faith, would you lay a hand on that area of the body that needs healing? We'll come into agreement and we'll see what God will do for you. May the glory of the Lord rest on you right now. Lord, we just lift those who have needs and we just declare that whatever has happened to them has happened for the glory of God to be revealed. And we say to them, this is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice that they will not die, but live and declare the glory of the Lord. They will declare your miracle power. They will declare it to this generation and generations to come, how you are a God who heals, who delivers, who sets the captive free. So stretch forth your hand now to do miracles. Let your glory come, Lord God. Let, let your glory fill their body to overflowing and correct any problem. And as people are laying hands on that area of the body that needs heal, healing, we, we join with them. We say out loud over it, be healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. By his stripes, I am healed. 
and for his glory, for his glory, I will proclaim. There's someone, you heard the story about the ear being opened and you have deafness in your right ear. God is healing that right now. He's opening it. He's able to clear away any obstruction right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed and be set free. Terry? Someone else, you've had some kind of an injury and you have a patch over one of your eyes and there's just been a lot of question about the outcome of that. God's healing that for you right now. That patch is going to come off and you're going to see perfectly. I don't know if this is the same one, but someone crying out, please say scratch cornea. Um, it's just a horrible thing that's been a recurring problem and you've had some kind of fungal infection and other things that are associated with it. God is healing you right now. He's restoring your eye. He's taking away all infection now in the name of Jesus. Be healed and be set free. And there's someone else. You have a problem um, with your feet. And uh, you, like there is no shoe that is comfortable for you. You've had other issues with um, growth on your feet that's not not normal. God's healing all of that for you right now. You're actually going to see your foot return from being deformed to looking normal, and you're going to be able to wear the shoes of your choice. Someone, you're in a neck brace. You've had a neck injury to the back of your neck um, going down your spine. God's healing you right now. He's restoring. He's able to take away all that in injury. We just come against any r residual trauma from the injury. We take it off of you right now. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you for, for who you are, for you are our healer, our savior, our deliverer. You provide all, every human need. We thank you for everything, for this is the day that you have made. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you have been touched by God, let us know. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. If you need prayer, we're here for you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do, if you want prayer, is pick up the phone and call us. 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, still ahead, the Grammy-winning artist who wrote the song, Chain Breaker. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, literally like 15, 20 minutes later, we had written that song. Zach Williams shares the real life story behind his hit song. That's later on today's 700 Club. Welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN Newsbreak. Wall Street wrapped its best quarter since 1998 Tuesday, with the S&P 500 up nearly 20 percent in the last three months, and the Nasdaq gaining even more as the market rebounded after the coronavirus lockdowns ended. Analysts expect more gains, but not as much for the rest of the year. The quarter ended with another strong session yesterday, with the indexes up again. What would you do if you were out on a boat ride and stumbled across a bear in trouble? One Wisconsin family jumped right into action. The Hurt family was out fishing when they saw a black bear with a plastic cheese ball container stuck on its head, struggling in the water. They knew they had to help. After maneuvering their boat to come alongside the bear, the first attempt got the container off, didn't quite work, so the family looped the boat back around for another try, and finally the bear was freed from the cheese ball container. The mom, Trisha Hurt, posted on Facebook saying after he was free, the bear swam safely to shore. I want to remind you, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Gordon and Terry are back with more of today's 700 Club right after this. Even though Xu Feng is still a child, he's already had several heart attacks. Many days he was so weak he would just lie in his bed waiting to die. His family had no way to pay for the surgery that could save his life until they, the day they met a visitor from CBN. Xu Feng's sister has always been his biggest fan, especially on the basketball court. Xiao Feng is my hero, so I never miss a game. I was so proud of him. When he scored, I clapped as loud as I could. It made me feel like a superstar. 
then one day, after a game, Xu Feng fainted. It was like there was a hammer pounding my heart. I got a sharp pain in my chest, and everything started spinning. Doctors said he had trouble with the upper part of his heart and had a sudden heart attack. I couldn't believe it. In the next few years, Xu Feng had many more heart attacks. I couldn't go to school. I couldn't play basketball. I was a burden to my family, a shell, a zombie. So I whipped my basketball clean every day and dream of playing again someday. Meanwhile, his sister stayed by his bedside, cheering him on. I hoped it would make him forget everything. I wish I could take the pain for him. But his heart got worse. Desperate to save Xu Feng's life, the Nongs tried to borrow money for surgery. We made a list of all the people we thought would help, but they all said no. It hurt so much to watch my child lying in bed, waiting to die. One time, he was hospitalized for a whole week after a heart attack. That's when a lady from CBN came to visit me in the hospital. She said, don't be afraid. Be brave. We will help you. We set up surgery for Xu Feng right away. Doctors repaired his heart and his dream of playing basketball again came true. My son is alive again. He's made a very strong recovery. My hero brother is back. He's even teaching me to play basketball. And when we were in the hospital, we heard about Jesus for the first time. The lady from CBN said people helped me because God loves me. So I accept God as my master, and he filled my heart with peace. I'm happier than ever before because I have a new life. Thank you. If you're a member of the 700 Club, thank you. That little boy has a new life because you cared enough to give to say, yes, I want to be a part of it. If you're not a member, we invite you to join right now. How much is it to be a member? Well, it's just $20 a month. Uh, that breaks out to 65 cents a day. But the key is you're joining with tens of thousands of people that say, I want to make a difference in the world. I want to see the gospel preached around the world. I want to see people helped around the world. All made possible because you care enough to give. If you're already a member, I encourage you to increase. We have other club levels. 700 Club Gold is $40 a month. We also have a 1,000 Club. That's $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Uh, the bank is doing all the work, and we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call or just go to CBN.com. When you give monthly on the Internet, you'll automatically sign up. Either way, do it now. 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, growing up, a musician grows weary, or coming up, a musician grows weary of the rock and roll lifestyle. I was standing on stage every night, just kind of for the high that I got of being out there in front of the crowd. And then I was walking off stage every night, coming home miserable. Zach Williams talks about the chains in his own life that inspired his Grammy-winning song after this. When Zach Williams released his first solo single, Chainbreaker, it reached number one on numerous charts for multiple weeks in a row. Then his album of the same name won a Grammy. The song Chainbreaker is taken straight from a chapter in Zach's real life when he felt shackled himself. I'd been in Nashville for an entire week, written songs all week long, had a four hour drive, and all I could think about was getting home. And I sat down with Jonathan and Mia, Jonathan Smith and Mia Fields. And at the time, me and my wife were very involved in prison ministry at our church. And Chainbreaker was thrown out as a title. She was like, well, you should write a song called Chainbreaker. The first thing out of my mouth was, if you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. And they were like, if you've been go back, what'd you say? Same old road, miles and miles. Literally like 15, 20 minutes later, 
we had written that song. Christian artist Zach Williams' CD, Chainbreaker, won a Grammy in 2018 for Best Contemporary Christian Music Album. But there was a time in Zach's life when he had chains of his own. Zach was raised in Jonesboro, Arkansas to Christian parents and was raised in church. It was storybook childhood. I mean, I had a great family, you know, from as early as I can remember. We were in church on Sundays and Wednesdays, and I knew all the stories in my head. I knew um, the scriptures and, the, you know, the teachings and things. Not sure that I really understood as far as, like, the heart part of it. In high school, however, he began drinking and doing drugs. It just kind of sucked me in, you know, that, that lifestyle. There wasn't anything that happened in my past or in my childhood that would you know, have pushed me to using drugs or alcohol. It was, it was more of a, you know, just kind of the wrong crowd. I knew it was wrong, but, you know, it was also, for me at that time, it was, it was fun. Uh, I didn't think it was a big deal, but obviously as I got older, it began to be a, a much bigger deal in my life. Zach was also a prep basketball star who hoped to go on to play college ball. But when an injury sidelined his career, he began to play guitar and his life goals changed. I was like, I want to be a rock star now, so I can do all this and it's justified and I can just, you know, continue to do this with my life. So for the next 10 years of my life, I literally carried a guitar with me everywhere I went. He eventually formed his own band, ironically entitled Zach Williams and the Reformation. You know, we had some success. We, uh, we toured Europe a couple times and did a tour with uh, the USO and played some music for the troops over in Japan one summer. And you know, for me, I felt like I'd made it. Zach met and began dating Crystal. The two later married, but Zach refused to change. For the first several years of our life, you know, I was pretty bad, drinking a lot, still using drugs quite a bit. I just remember telling my wife, you knew this when you met me, you know, I'm not gonna change. That was always kind of my, my thing whenever she would come to me and say like, you know, you need to grow up. You know, we need to make some changes in our life. I knew she was telling the truth about everything. You know, I, I, I did need to make some changes. All the while, his parents continued to pray for him. That's where their faith was tested. But I also saw them never quit praying, never give up. Even when I didn't want to hear them pray for me, they would come to my house and sit on my couch and pray for me and my wife and my family. Eventually, Zach tired of the rock life and the toll it was taking on his marriage and family. Living the lifestyle I was living, obviously I couldn't be a good dad. Um, with all the success I'd had from the band that we were in and the places we'd played, I was just, you know, I was a miserable I mean, just shell of a person. Going out and playing these shows wasn't making it any better, you know. I was standing on stage every night just kind of for the high that I got of being out there in front of the crowd. And then I was walking off stage every night, coming home miserable. While driving through Spain with his band, Zach heard a song on the radio. I heard Redeemed by Big Daddy Weave come across the radio while we were in Spain, and God just got my attention and, and basically said, I see you differently than you see yourself, and I've given you this gift, I've given you all these chances, and, you know, I want you to use this for me, and if you will, I'll, I'll give you things you've never dreamed of. That night, Zach called Crystal. And I was like, when this tour's over, I'm done quit my band, we're gonna cancel our shows. I remember walking in the door and just busting into tears and just asking for forgiveness for my wife and kids and just apologizing for the past and all the wrongs I'd done, you know, I, I felt horrible. And it was like this moment with God where I just said, you know, I can't do this anymore. I don't care if I ever play another song or I play guitar. But what I'm supposed to do with my life is work with my dad in this construction company and just be a good dad and a good father and go to church. That's what I want to do. And when I got done praying that prayer and, and, and asking God to just come live in my life, you know, just, just be the Lord of my life, it was this, whew, like I don't have to go and do what I've been doing anymore. And that's when, for me, things just started changing in my life. Zach and Crystal both accepted Christ in 2012, and they began attending a local Baptist church in Jonesboro. I stopped playing music for about six months, and then out of the blue one day, I was walking around on a construction site with my dad, and I started hearing words to a song in my head, and I started writing them down, and before I knew it, I had written a Christian song. Soon after, the leadership of the church asked Zach to be the worship pastor. This kind of blew me away because they were willing to take a chance on somebody that they really didn't know that much, but 
They had seen God working in mine and my family's life. But the first time I stood on stage and led worship, it was the very first time I ever remember feeling like I wasn't faking it. I just remember I had my eyes closed and I was just singing to the Lord. Other doors began opening for Zach, including the chance to write with several noted Nashville songwriters. He began making the four hour trek regularly from Jonesboro. One evening, he got a call from a record label executive. He said, hey, are you sitting down? And I was like, yeah, and he was like, well, um, played your song for the record label today in a, in a meeting and they want to offer you a record deal. And I was just like, what? The prayer that I prayed six months before that, you know, God heard my prayer. Zach, Crystal, and their children recently moved to a home near Nashville. He is currently touring with his band and is excited to see the plans God has for him and his music. Since I hit the ground and fell on my hands and knees that day in my bedroom in 2012, it's been one thing after another that God has just shown up and, and really done in my life and in my family's life. He's, he's strengthened my marriage, you know, my relationship between me and my wife. It's just been really neat, you know, to see and to be a part of. It's been so humbling and, I mean, just, just to know that He hears your prayers and your cries, you know, it's, it's really cool. It's enough to know that he hears your prayers and your cries. He wants to be your all in all. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants to be with you. He wants to be in you. He wants to be all around you. Why? Because he's your father. He's the reason you have breath in your lungs. Uh, God breathed on Adam and he became a living soul. We are part of him and he loves us unconditionally. Now for Zach, you hear the story, uh, and, and maybe it's a common story. You know, you start hanging around in high school, and then you, you get in with the wrong crowd, and you start doing things you know are wrong, but you just start doing them. And, and then before long, you realize, well, I can't stop doing them. Uh, he, he, Zach got married, and his you know, wife started saying, you know, it's time for you to grow up. It's time for you to take on responsibilities. It's time for you to be a dad. And Zach wouldn't have any of it. He wanted to live life his own way, on his own terms. Maybe you're like that. Maybe you didn't get involved in drugs and alcohol, but you got involved in, eh, I want to live life my way. And then you start doing it your way. You start realizing, well, where's the meaning? Where's the purpose? What's all this about? For Zach, it came to a point where, you know, he's on a tour and, and uh, I don't have anything anymore. When you have God in your life, you have everything. And the wonderful news is he's got a great adventure for you. He's laid out good things for you before the beginning of time. He's, he was thinking of you and, and what you and him could do together. And, and he still has that dream. He still wants that for you. Now, what does it take to get it? Well, same thing that Zach did. Zach got on his knees, raised his hands. That's a surrender. He said, not my will anymore, but your will. God, come into my heart. Make me new again. And if you do that, and if you pray that, and you do it with all of your heart, here's what the Bible says. I, I, I will come to you. When you seek me with all of your heart, then you will find me. And then you'll find the release that you're looking for. If you'd like this today, if you want to pray that, here's the prayer for you. God, if you're there, if you're real, if you can really change me, if you can really make me new again, if you really have an adventure for me, can you show up? Can you show up for me? And if you pray that with all of your heart, if you seek him with all of your heart, he'll answer. If you want help with this prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000, just say, I want to find Jesus, and I want to find him today. Phone call's free. Make it now. 1-800-700-7000. We leave you today with this word from John chapter 8. 
If the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. For all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again.